Good morning. That was pretty good. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, that was awesome. I just have on my heart this morning uh, Colossians two, uh, 3, 1 and 2. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, s s sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. So for right now, let's just shake off everything of yesterday. Right now, let's just jump into the presence of Lord who loves us, who adores us, and we have a, an amazing opportunity to sit in his presence and worship him. Father, just let your spirit come. Touch each person. Reveal to us not just your love, but your adoration this morning. As we adore you, Father, I know it comes back. It flows into us and through us to make a difference in this world. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Good. Well, have you already said hello to uh, quite a few people this morning? So I won't make you do it again. <laughs> why, don't, why don't we stand? Thank you, Jesus. We're going to praise. We're going to worship. We're going to thank going to give honor to the Lord today. Why don't we just start in the wake of a beautiful prayer. Just lift up your hands. Lift them high. As high as you're able. Just tell him. Say it to him. Speak it out loud. Let your own ears hear yourself say it. How great, how good, how marvelous, how wonderful. Honor and glory and praise, thanksgiving from our grateful hearts, Lord. How we worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I 
see heaven invading this place. Can you see it? I see angels praising your holy name. And I sing praises, I sing praises. I give you honor, worth. Sing that again. I see, I see heaven invading this place. I see angels praising your holy name. I sing praises, I sing praises. I give you honor, worthy Jesus. We give, oh, we give you praise. All of the honor, you are our God. The one we live for, we give you praise. again. 
presence of God. Your presence is so rich and full and strong. We just lean into you, Lord. Lean into you. With every breath, I've decided to praise you. To not only give you praise, but be your praise, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless your mighty name. I'm going to sing our new song. Sometimes you gotta dance through the dark, sing through the fire, praise when it don't make 
make sense. Sometimes you gotta stare down the giant, worship the lion's den. Sometimes you gotta shout it from the mound, louder in the bow, trusting that he's gonna get you there. Sometimes you gotta welcome the one, wait for the answer, worship with your hands in the air. I'll praise you anywhere, praise, give him praise, give him praise, and the high. Sometimes you gotta dance through the dark, sing through the fight, praise it when it don't make sense. Sometimes you gotta stare down the giant, worship from the lion's den. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta shout it from the mount, louder in the valley, trusting that it's gonna get you there. Sometimes you gotta welcome the one, wait for the answer. Worship with your hands in the air. I'll praise you anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. with your hands held high. I'll praise you anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. He is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise.
times you gotta praise in the prison, cry out to him, shout it till the door swing wide. Sometimes you gotta stand on your shack, pray in the bath, worship with your hands held high. I'll praise you anywhere, praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise.
and you put me back together. <laughs> now every desire is now satisfied. together. Testimony time. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can sing that again. You turn morning to
our homes, our loved ones, our lives. 
here in this room, here online. together now. Sing all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Praise our new Lord. One more time. Sing all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. And these bones Oh, no. 
of God wash over you. Just lift your countenance. Renew your strength. Revitalize right here and now in this room. Oh, 
Oh, how we love 
Jesus, I love you. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Oh, how I love you. As you are the one my, my heart adores. Oh, Jesus, I love you.
and practice praising me through it, you will keep your peace all the way through the trials. So la basa kaive but when you focus on what the enemy is doing in your life, you will end up with stress, fear, and anxiety, and you will end up doing it on your own. And I can't move in your life the way I want to. So instead, when your battles come or your struggles come, focus on me, praise me all the way through it, and you will be in perfect peace and watch me move, says the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. All the way through, Lord. Every step of the way. And I... I just want to say, Father, as for me and my house, we'll praise you anywhere. <laughs> in any circumstance, in any trial, in the midst of the fire, even in the prison, Lord. I'll praise you anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. I confirm with what Candace was saying. Um, anxiety is not from God. And the enemy would want you to have anxiety. And the symptoms will come through your neck and through your back and spasms and stuff like that. But God's not a God of anxiety or spasms. So right now, God, we thank you for confirming the word through Candace and also that you gave me that that you're not a God of anxiety or confusion or frustration, but you're a God of peace and soundness of mind. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just one more time. Sing praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest he. Anybody else have a word? Make sure it's from the Lord. Jesus. It's good. I just want to testify just personally how heartwarming and strengthening, so exciting, and kind of a explosion of gratefulness and thankfulness to see Willem here this morning. Just <laughs> and Father, we are in 
full agreement together for the full restoration of that young man in acceleration in Jesus' name. Yeah. Let it move quickly and completely and powerfully a testimony to all around him. Father, we also pray and uphold Willem's dad, Tom, right now. We just ask you for recovery for him to quicken his body, to strengthen his body, to restore his strength, to put him back together again in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, have mercy on him. Have mercy even in the face of all the things, Lord. Have mercy on him and do a mighty work, a glorious work in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, let Willem see it and rejoice. We rejoice with him. And Father, I also pray special prayer of strength right now for Aubrey. She would fill her to overflowing. All that she has walked through these last few years, we've just watched her so strong and so brave as that song said, Lord. Sometimes you got to Stand in the midst of all of it in the lion's den and just be brave and be strong and praise him anyway. Praise him anyway. And so, Father, we ask for a special dose of your Holy Spirit that you would fill her up completely. Let her know unequivocally that you're with her, that you've got her. And Lord, provide, provide in amazing ways. Provide financially. We say everything that the canker worm has stolen, everything that has been lost will be restored and it must be restored sevenfold in Jesus' name. Even more in abundance. You're a God of abundance in Jesus' name. The same for Tom and for Sharon in Jesus' name. Let that family know you are God. Let them know. Show them, Lord, and bless their socks off, God. Oh, Jesus' name. Jesus' name, Lord. Holy God, you are wonderful. You are wonderful. We receive it all together for our own lives, Lord, right now in Jesus' name. Quickening life and strength, power of God, mighty God, head to toe, head to toe in Jesus' name. Mm, I feel it very strongly right now. God is in the atmosphere. Mm, His provision is here as well. We think of it in terms many times of physical provision, but His financial provision soul provision as well touching reaching blessing abundance abundance from the spirit of God and right in the middle of it all we praise you Lord we praise you Lord we praise you Jesus name well many of us are already seated so you can be seated now if you'd like to Man, that does good for me. I don't I don't know. I just I just can't uh, I don't think I could well never mind. (laughs) Oh God, maybe I'll tell you later. Jesus. Woo. Touch, touch from heaven. All right. Okay. Hi. Jesus is good. We'll do the bread with the juice at the end. Ha ha. God, you are good. Thank you, Lord. All right. Welcome this morning. Glad to see you all. Uh, Let's see. We'll do the announcements briefly. Get through that. 
think everybody's been here before, so we'll keep going in the slides. Yep. <laughs> Beloved Women's Lunch coming up next Saturday, so sign up at the sh on the sheet uh, as you exit the building if you're planning to come so the ladies can make a reservation at the restaurant. You guys have heard this explanation many times, so I'll spare you the details. You've read it many times, and it's in your inbox at home as well, so just don't forget. Freedom House is coming up on July 19th. That'll be at our house. It'll be a potluck. Um, I'll let you know next Sunday what I'm making because I do not know at this moment, but I'll let you know. But we'd love all of you to come and be together with us and have fun just celebrating how good God is and how awesome his body is and all those things. So put that on your calendar if it isn't already. And then we have another barbecue coming up at the end of the month. So we're going to do the last Sunday of, we did June, we'll do July, and then we'll do August uh, as well. So July 30th is the date on this one, $12 per person. Uh, we're having chicken skewers, kind of a Mediterranean menu, chicken skewers, orzo, and dessert, orzo salad, excuse me, and dessert. So it's going to be yummy. Um, we'll have a sign-up sheet uh, next Sunday. Sure. Sure. We'll start signing up next Sunday, and uh, you, or you can tell Carla, and then uh, it's twelve dollars a person just to cover the cost of food. So, just plan on doing that. It's always it, the food's always good, but the fellowship's always better. So, look forward to that every time. And then we have prayer and intercession, prayer slash intercession. There's so many different kinds of prayer. The Bible talks about winter session being one of them. And we also do some petition prayer and, and some agreement prayer. And there's uh, lots of binding and loosing prayer. We do all of them, I think, uh, just about on uh, Thursday night. Worship is a type of prayer. We do that too. So come on out Thursday night, 630. You can join us here um, live in person or you can join online. I know a lot of you do that. So um, we're just reminding you about it and we're going to be here. So come on out for that. Let's see. I think that's it for me. I'm going to invite Natalie up to share an offering message. Here she comes. Good morning again. It's offering time and if you need an envelope for cash or electronic giving, raise your hand and our faithful usher John will serve you. <laughs> so I want to talk about uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or ne of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. I honed in on that last phrase, for God loves a cheerful giver. I started thinking about that word loves. And it's the highest form of love. It's the word that we use for agape. It's the God kind of love. And um, it says that he's not willing to do without it. He longs for it. And I thought, what is it about this cheerful giver? Why is it that you love so much this cheerful giver? And a cheerful giver, of course, that word also means hilarious, you know, um, <laughs> happy, you know, but it's, it's more than that. It goes deeper than just being happy to do it. It's someone who is willing immediately to do whatever God tells you to do. It's, it's, if God tells you, asks you to do something, you're more than willing. You're, you're prompt to do it. You don't drag your feet. You don't, you don't have a grudge about it. You know, it, it, he's, he's looking for someone who has his nature of giving, God is, that's his nature to give. And, and when he sees someone with that nature, it, it, he longs for, he, he loves it. It's, it's so precious and dear to him. Yes. So, and, and also that word means, um, goes further, meaning merciful. And um, God is merciful. And when he sees the attributes, that we're, we're coming into his attributes of mercy and love, it warms his heart, more, more than warms his heart. It's a bigger, bigger definition than that. But it also shows that we trust him. That if there's an amount that he asks us to give and we're, whoa, wait a minute, that's a lot. Oh, I don't know, I'm short this month or whatever. But when we, if we're willing and prompt to do it, we show that we trust him. Yes. So we put our trust in him. We, we um, show mercy and we're ready 
to honor him and whatever he asks. That's why he loves, was willing, not willing to do without a cheerful giver. And so we thank you, Lord. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy, your love, yes. your giving. You, you, that's your, your commodity, I guess, to, to give. And we give. And when we give, it's given back to us. Yes. And there's no bigger giver than you, Father. And we thank you for giving your son, Jesus. We thank you for his body that, that cleanses us, that, that uh, keeps us healthy, that uh, is the great exchange for us, Father. We thank you for that he is the propitiation for our sin. We, we, are, we are redeemed, Father. We, I just, we just can't thank you enough. We can't thank you for the love and the mercy and the kindness that you give us. And so we, we give our offering today in thanksgiving and, and in honor of you, Father. And we thank you for overflow. We thank you for your faithfulness to see us through. We thank you for your faithfulness to um, continue to give us an abundance of more than enough of everything that we could ever ask or think. We praise you and we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Okay, you can take the offering. Good. Thank you, Jesus. All right. <clears throat> Let's see if I can make enough room up here. <clears throat> well, since I have the microphone and since I'm the pastor... Um, I just, <laughs> I just texted, uh, my dad this morning and told him that we were going to pray for him. And he said, thank you. Uh, last week I told you a little bit about that, right? He's been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and, um, they don't, I have not heard to what extent as of yet, but I know to what extent healing is from Jesus. So um, would you join with me, uh, taking my prerogative to, um, to cover him. His name is Bob or Robert. And uh, I don't know if you want to stretch out your hand or however you want to do it. I don't know if he's going to be watching or not. But together, Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, we lift up my father, <laughs> Uh, my dad, we ask you for your healing power, your healing grace, miraculous power uh, to flow richly, gloriously in his body, in his bloodstream to every organ in his body. And we together take our authority and rebuke cancer. We rebuke the invader. We are rebuke the trespasser right now in Jesus' name. We command cancer to dry up, to wither up and die, and to be eradicated from his body now. Uh, tumor, I command you to shrink, shrink down to nothing in Jesus' name. Every cell, every free radical, and yes, right now, die, die, die. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for healing power coursing in him, strengthening him, his body responding, bulking up and responding, strengthening his muscles, strengthening, quickening in Jesus' name. I believe in the supernatural. I believe in the unction and the anointing. I believe in the power of God and the blood of Jesus. And we plead the blood. This is my family. As I said last week, I have authority, so I'm taking authority in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord. He will not go home to heaven prematurely. He will not be stolen from us in Jesus' name. He's going to live a long and full life here on the earth uh, for us to enjoy with him and for him to enjoy in Jesus' name. We decree it. We proclaim it. And we say, so be it right now. Right now together. And we thank you, Father. We're in agreement. Said we're two or more gathered in your name. There you are in the midst. We believe in the power 
of agreement in the name of Jesus. Your blood is mightier. Your name is mightier. And we're praising you right now in the midst. We say we praise you, Lord. We praise you for the outcome. We pray you praise you for heaven's report. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for doing that with me. I appreciate that. Just needed, helpful. <clears throat> well, I, I think uh, yet again, I praised myself happy. I, I feel selfish. I think that's what I was going to try to tell you a moment ago is I'm, I'm, I'm being selfish um, as a pastor and leading worship, uh, I, I can't, you know that old song, it was, a, I can't remember who it was, uh, I Can't Drive 55. <laughs> you don't remember that song? It was a rock and roll song. <clears throat> yeah, it, was, it came out during the time when they changed all the speed limit signs. I, we're all old enough in here, right? You remember the 55 speed limit sign? Do you remember that? Well, I don't remember what administration that was during. Was that Clinton administration and Carter administration? I don't know. Uh, trying to save fuel and everything. And somebody came out with a song, I can't drive 55. <laughs> Sammy Hagar. That was it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Is that okay to say in church? I don't know. Yeah. So in the same way, I can't worship for just 20 minutes. I can't. I, I, you know what? It offends me. This, this is me talking. This isn't, I'm not, you know, quoting scripture and verse. This is just my personal journey with the Lord. And selfishly, I'm leading you for a long time of praise and worship because I can't worship for 20 minutes. I refuse to settle and go with what the world says, not the church, the world says church should look like. God bless you. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of people who aren't here because I've done that. So, unfortunately, it's just, I still, I believe that in praise, in our praises and in worship, things get taken care of and finished and completed that we'll never ever have to pray for because God took care of it because we came to him in praise. In fact, you're not even going to know yeah. the stuff you would have gone through because you chose to take extra time in your life. I'm not just talking about on a Sunday morning. I'm, I'm talking about living your life as a praise to him. Yes. That he saved us, yeah, but he keeps saving us yes. constantly. Boy, that'll really preach, I think. That really would. Well, how do you know that? I just know. I have an inward knowing, and I believe we're going to find out when we get to heaven. I don't know how. I don't know. Maybe God's going to just reveal in a twinkling of an eye, a, a moment of time, suddenly we're going to know. I, I don't even understand, maybe even comprehend how that could possibly happen. It's like, wow, I just saw everything that could have happened to me that didn't happen because I was praising him. Living our lives, not just praising him, but as a praise to him. My life is a praise to you. So good. Yeah. Uh, Paul said, we are living epistles known and read by all men. Now, did he mean we're walking around like an open book and they see words on us? No. No. 
they, he said it another way, they experience, and whether we understand it or not, they understand and receive from the aroma of Christ, the fragrance of Christ. You didn't put cologne on this morning, maybe, maybe you did, but you've got the holy cologne. You've got the holy sweet perfume on you. Yeah, it exudes out of you and out of your pores. Because you're a living epistle, you're living praise to the God, to God, to Him. Yeah, but I messed up. He doesn't care. <laughs> really, do we got to get that through our our understanding? It has shaped how we perceive, how we react, and how we act in our everyday life because we think he really does care because that's what religions told us that God is just sitting waiting with judgment in the air every movement you make every mistake you make he's just waiting there to punish you that couldn't be further from the truth of who God is then why did Jesus come to save us was it just a temporary salvation while we're still here on the earth? It's this temporary thing that, you know, just kind of works while you're here until you blow it. And then it all goes away just like smoke vaporizes until you come back to the altar on your knees and say, oh God, forgive me. Then you have a chance to, that's what religion says the course of Christianity looks like. But the truth is, Jesus did it all, once and for all, wiped it all out, wiped the slate clean, not so that we could have the right to sin, but so that we could enjoy the right to walk in freedom and live free. He dealt with sin. He dealt with the sin issue. What an honor. And anyone who says... And comes back with the retort of, oh, that's just greasy grace. Doesn't understand grace. They don't understand it. We're a praise. I want us to go to 1 Peter 2. We're going to kind of take up where we left off. And uh, continue a little bit further with what time we have today. Um, I really believe that this is important. This is a message about grace, but... It's, it's more than that because it's who we are. It's our identity now. And it's how we live and how we show forth our praise to him. This gives him so much glory all the time. Number one, the fact that you chose him. <laughs> and it's, it's beautiful. He gave us the faith to do it. It was a gift. Do you know that? You, we would not even be able to come to him and, and invite Jesus into our life apart from him giving us the gift to believe, the gift of faith, the gift of faith. I think the New Testament's really pretty clear on that. So 1 Peter 2, verse 1 says, therefore, I'll go through 1 through 10, says, therefore, lay aside all malice all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking as newborn babes. Now, the, the church is majored on all of the sin issues, telling us, put them aside, lay them aside, die to yourself. You've got you've to live perfectly. But the truth is, he says, you can put them aside. You, you are able to let them go. Because you can come innocent now. That's what a newborn babe is. Completely innocent. Right? <laughs> There's no judgment hanging over your head anymore. Come as newborn babes, babes desiring uh, the, the pure milk or sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have t uh, tasted that the Lord is gracious. Have you? We have. Verse 4, coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious, you also as living stones. He is the cornerstone, right? He was rejected. 
and he says, we'll be rejected because he's rejected. But now we're living stones, living stones, living epistles, and being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through, through Jesus Christ. Oh, that's so beautiful. That will be, that should be our point of majoring right there. Who we are, what God has created us to be, these living stones built up as spiritual house, a holy priesthood, so that we can offer up spiritual sacrifices. You're a house of the Lord. You're not just here today in the house of the Lord. You are the house of the Lord. You're his dwelling place, right? So you bring church everywhere you go. True? Our, our paradigm of church is gathering and meeting, and I think things have shifted over time, but we're the body of Christ. And it's great to gather and meet, and we need to do it. We shouldn't forsake it. But we are the carriers of the love and the presence and the goodness, the very life and fragrance of God everywhere we go. Yes. Verse 6, therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. That's old covenant. Now, wait a second. Why does religion keep putting us to shame then? Why does religion want to keep holding us in shame when even in the old covenant it was prophesied that the cornerstone would come and set us free from shame? Jesus. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. We talked about that last week. Boy, is that true. Is there any offense in the earth right now? I feel like a spirit of offense has been released. I don't, I don't think it's in Revelation that it's one of the bowls or something like that, that there's an offense bowl, but it sure feels like something spilled out into the earth, spilled out into America, but I don't think it's just America that's experiencing it. I think it's everywhere. And not only is offense looming for people to take hold of and, and keep and then go into bitterness, <laughs> it's, it's like swirling in the atmosphere. It's hanging around. We have to reject it. We have to push it back constantly. Every kind of offense that there is, put it under your feet. Put it under your feet. They stumble being disobedient to the word, to which they were also appointed. We mentioned that. Remember, everybody, they're appointed to come to Christ. They're appointed. But if they're stumbling around under this spirit of offense and everything else that hell can loose and release in this hour, my Lord, we need breakthrough. We need to see people instantly set free or even be walked into freedom and helped through freedom to break through from all of this ridiculousness. But, say but. But you, say but me. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim. Say proclaim. proclaim. Say it a little louder. Proclaim. Oh! That we might proclaim, even show forth. Another translation says, live forth. Right? Be a living epistle. The praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, does he call you out of darkness for a moment and then allow darkness to just swallow you up again? 
and then have to call you out again? No, that was a one-time deal, I believe. He called us out of darkness. We're not part of darkness anymore. We are the light. We are children of the light. Wow. I think that's incredible to change my thinking, change my whole understanding. I don't have any darkness in me in Jesus' name. I won't let any darkness have any part of my life. The light of God is shining brightly through me and working in me. It changes your whole focus and understanding. I've said it many times here from the pulpit over the years, probably because it was ingrained in my thinking over many years, you know, when you've been doing this for a little while. You too. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Yeah. Yeah. You, have you ever said that? Raise your hand if you've ever said that. Yeah. Ever. That Maybe only once for some of you, right? How many of us still say, I've even still said it. And I'm trying to break the habit. Because I'm not identifying as a sinner. I mean, they can identify as everything in the world now, right? <laughs> they can identify as a cow if they want to. I'm not identifying as a sinner anymore. Because I'm not. And can I just make a strong suggestion? How about a demand on a Sunday morning? You don't either. Don't identify as a sinner because you're not. That's not who you are. The Bible says you once were. You once were. Last time my grammar, I checked, that's a past tense statement. It means it's behind you. It's his story, history. You once were, but not anymore. You're free. We are free. Let's identify in our freedom. Let's live this life of praise to God and identify in our true freedom. We're not sinners. We're not prone to sin. We're not having anything to do with sin. No, we're helping people out of sin because of what Jesus did. Yes. Yeah, that's it. That's powerful. I think the truth will set us free. And that's the truth. That's the truth. He called us out of darkness into his marvelous light who once were, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God. <laughs> we didn't have a home for a long time or for a while. Maybe some of us were just, you know, right, lived our lives right into the born again status. But there's many of us who weren't. But now we are the people of God. We had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. I want us to go to Philippians chapter 3. We'll just continue on a little bit further. God, you're good. The word is powerful, isn't it? Sometimes just reading it carries so much strength in life. I get excited. I'm happy. Philippians 3, let's look at verse 1. We're going to go through verse 17, Kathy. It says, finally, my brethren and sisters, right? Rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous. But for you, it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the Concision? I'm not sure. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. 
I'm going to read that again. We worship God. We are the circumcision we which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Amen. I will not carry confidence in the flesh. I'm being pulled by the gravity of heaven into the goodness of God, into confidence in the Holy Spirit. I'm being drawn by the power of God, and I will not relent. I will not relinquish any ground. Verse 4, therefore, I might also have confidence in the flesh if any other man thinketh, oh, this is King James, huh? That he hath (laughs) <laughs> whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, uh, of the tribe of Benjamin. I must have copied it wrong. That's okay. Um, it says, an Hebrew, not a Hebrew, an Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteous, which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Okay, we're going to read it in the King James. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith, through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Oh, amen. And the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might, thank you, Jesus, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, let me continue on. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfected, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press forward. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I press forward. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. We're following after you, Lord. We're following hard after you in Jesus' name. Praises to God. Praises to you, Lord. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. And this is what I believe that we are living praise, living worship to the Lord, that every day as we follow after him and seek him, it just brings so much glory to God. Constantly, he's so 
elated, I believe. He's so happy. How could he not be? His son took care of everything for us. Translated us out of darkness. Brought us into the kingdom of light. So now we press forward. We press toward the mark of the upward call, the high call. This is our high call, to be praises before the king. Praisers and a life of praise to him. Hmm. Jesus. I'm just pausing. I'm just stopping to let it sink in. Consider it. We've been told, we've been taught how horrible we are, how miserable we are. And I believe that message comes from the pit of hell because it's against God's very precious creation. He created us and He wanted to redeem us back to Himself. That in itself is a praise to God. But now that we've received Christ and we're abiding in Him and living in Him, how much more a constant praise to God. You don't have to turn there. I'm going to read uh, Psalm verse 8. This is just verse 1 and 2. It says, O Lord, our Lord, How excellent is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Powerful, right? And in the context of how amazing God is, it says, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. So in the midst of praise and honor and all glory to God, the scripture says, he ordained little infant babies. And and the word here that's used or translated is strength. It's it's a two-letter Hebrew word, O-Z. I'm assuming it's pronounced Oz. Ooz. O's? I'm not sure. My lack of Hebrew scholardom shines forth. But the word translated strength there means force. God, out of the mouth of babes, out of the mouth of children, out of the mouth of humans, He has ordained force and praise and mighty power. Out of our mouths, God has ordained that we would be not just singers of praise, but releasers of praise. You have ordained praise because of your enemies. The word ordained is yakad, Y-A-C-A-D. It means appointed or founded as a foundation. God created a foundation of praise in you and I. We were born as a foundation of praise. That's what that scripture is saying. So let me read it again. O Lord, our our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. It starts with praise, right? Who have set your glory Above the heavens, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained praise, force, and mighty power. You have appointed or created a foundation of praise. We were created to be praisers. I hope I got that across to you. Now, Matthew chapter 21. 
We can go over there. Starts in verse 12. Matthew 21, 12. Says Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who brought who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, and he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And there's more. I'm going to read a little bit more, but I just want to take a moment and tell you, I believe God is moving and working to do a miraculous work in and through the church. Where maybe unknowingly, maybe as a vessel uh, not really quite understanding what was going on, men have given themselves over to this world's idea of what church is supposed to look like and be with, with more entertainment. And, uh, you know, we, we want, we can't, we have a short attention span. The world tells us, you know, that, that never used to be a thing until psychologists came in and suddenly began to teach and tell us that you can't, uh, you can't hold attention very long. Isn't that interesting how um, all, through, all through the early days of, oh, I don't know, America, and, you know, they would sit in all kinds of conditions. They would gather in all kinds of places and honor the Lord, maybe sometimes out of religion, but I believe because their heart was after God. Philosophy comes in, psychology comes in and says, hey, you, you just can't handle more than maybe 15 minutes or 20 minutes. And, oh, oh, is that right? Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know, I didn't know that. Oh, oh, I have to quit early. Oh, I can't stay long. I got, I got to leave. And, and suddenly, but, but in school, they'll sit you in class for 45 minutes, 50 minutes and teach you. But in church, wholeheartedly, so hook, line, and sinker, we've swallowed it. We, we can't handle worship any longer than 20 minutes. It's a psychological fact. You know, that, that's the way we, oh yeah? Is that how God created us? We can't worship for more than 20 minutes? No, we were created a praise to him. Our whole life is a praise to him. We ought to be able to, the other side, the supernatural side is, when we get lost in worship and praise in him, time goes out the window. And suddenly, psychology and your mind and your flesh doesn't even care anymore. But we got to be willing to go past, push past, break through all restrictions, especially what the devil tells you. And give our lives to him in praise. God created us to praise him. So Jesus is cleaning house. This is what my house is supposed to be. Where's your attention? Where's your focus? You've gone off to other things. You're buying and selling. Come back to the Father and bring praise. He says, then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed him. That's what I believe is going to begin to unfold as there is, I don't know, maybe this is not the right way to say it, but a house cleaning, a, 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 a resetting of how things are done in the church. Because when the glory comes, when the power of God is present, any, any concerns, any, any mind restrictions, any any things that were holding us back go out the window and nobody cares anymore. In Azusa Street, they went into a, an old horse barn and worshiped for hours and just sat. And because there was residual, I know this is gross, but residual 
because of new uh, King James, dung in the barn. There were also a lot of flies, but people did not care because the presence of God superseded it all. There is that beautiful place where the presence is in the house and the glory is in the house and, and those things go out the window. And there also is that place where we decide, I'm a praise to you, God. I want to be here. I love worshiping you and I'm going to give you everything even if I don't feel like it or if I don't want to. Then the blind will see the lame the healing. Verse 15, it says, but when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, just doesn't even make sense, does it? They saw the wonderful things he did and got offended. And the children crying out in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. How dare you have fun in the house of God? How dare you enjoy yourself in the presence of God? That's what religion will do every time. And he said to them, did you not hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes, you have never read out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected praise. Now that wasn't just to say these little ones are praising him, but that's to say that's what they were created for, praising the Most High God. Jesus. We're going we're gonna to have to get back to more of this because <laughs> I've got too many notes. One, two, three, four. How many pages? And there's more, and there's more, more, a lot more of who we are. I believe we're entering into seasons and hours and days and times where our praise is not only going to be needed, but pulled on and called upon. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let, let's take time and receive communion, continue our worship. We're going to have co the full communion this morning with the bread and the cup all together because I forgot about it during worship. I got lost, for which I will not apologize. <clears throat> Jesus, it's breaking out more and more. So you, you probably already have your bread. Why don't you come and get your cup? We'll have the uh, picture side come first. You can have wine or we have juice, either one for you. The cup of blessing, the Bible says. We're going to receive the cup of blessing together. <clears throat> praise. Give Him praise. Give Him praise in the highest Praise. Give him praise. Give him praise in the highest. He is worthy. He is worthy of all of the praise. Worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. morning. It's all right. All is well. <laughs> wow. Not only do you give him praise, but you are praise. Thank you, honey. Got your bread? Michelle, why don't you come up and join me this morning? 
You, you still had your whole thing to share, didn't you? Get your bread ready. Got it ready. Thank you, Lord. I guess we break it in two if you like to do that. I like to do it because it reminds us, Lord, that because Paul told us to remember you by doing this exercise of communion and in communion, and it tells us that you were broken on behalf of us. And so I like breaking the bread to remind me of that. That every bit of brokenness was taken on the cross, was paid for on the cross. So we stand in faith for that, Lord, whether it's spiritual brokenness, physical brokenness, emotional brokenness, financial brokenness. Any kind of brokenness, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We praise you that you carried that for us. We make that exchange this morning and we honor you, God. It's an honor when we take what you've provided and we apply it and we live it out, God. It's not an honor to you, Lord, if we live with brokenness in our lives. That's religion has taught that it's a humble thing to walk around sick and poor and needy and all those things. That's not honoring you. You paid the price. You carried the pain. You took the burden. You carried our pains and our sorrows, it says in Isaiah. Our sicknesses, it says. You were broken. You were beaten for on our behalf. You didn't need those things done. You were perfect. We needed those things done. And you did them for us. And so this morning, Lord, we praise you. From a pure heart, just like those babes, Lord. We sing your praise. We sing your praise and we thank you and we praise you and we honor you and receive all that you have provided for us as we eat this bread on your behalf and we thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. All right, let's eat. That was good. That jogged my memory. Let's take the cup. The new covenant in your blood shed for us. Redemption. Salvation. Deliverance. Hmm. Right mind. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. A right mind. To be seated and clothed and come into our right mind because of the blood, because of what you've done. Thank you, Lord. We apply the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over our lives, over our homes, over our loved ones, our families in Jesus' name. Spiritually, right now, we anoint our doorposts with the blood. We anoint this church with the blood. And we thank you, Lord, for your wonderful protection and salvation. We remember you, Jesus, and we are grateful. Let's take the cup and drink together. beautiful. It's good. Thank you, Lord. Just so precious. So rich. Wow. There's much more to come. 
much more where God is taking us, where we are headed. Walk with faith, believing, trust Him. Be in agreement with heaven. Be in agreement with the promises of God. And just continue to praise Him. Praise Him in the good, of course. Praise Him in the hard. Praise Him in, through the difficult. And watch what takes place every single time. Yep. Tom and Sharon are amening. I know that. Yep. Kathy and Phil amening. I can see it. You know, they've been through some things recently, right? How many of you have been through some things recently? Yeah. And it just resonates with you, doesn't it? Just excites me to no end. So let's stand together. And I believe it's uh, Natalie and Sherry, right? Available for prayer. Anybody desiring prayer or agreement of any kind will have that available. I think also I wanted to mention, maybe you didn't see it online, but Jim is going to be having a, uh, what, what do you call it? A gallery kind of thing, a showing, a showing at Saddleback. A theme of God's glory in creation, which is all of his paintings, <laughs> pretty much. And so, uh, what is the date that that's happening? Uh, the opening is July 15th. July 15th, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock p.m. PM. PM, PM, all right. And After that, the show is going to be up for three months. It'll be available for three months, but Jim will be there on July 15th. If you're, if you're able to go, go support him check out his full art gallery there. Mm -hmm. That's a blessing. So let's lift our hands and give praise to the Lord. We praise you, Lord. Glory and honor, thanksgiving. You are wonderful, Lord. Have your way. This is your day. And we will praise you in Jesus' name. You are blessed and you are